compilation time. Okay, thank you. Bye. School gym class. Now, out of all the classes that we have to take in school, I think it's safe to say that gym class is probably one of the most pointless that we have to go through. Like, you're telling me that I'm getting graded on how good I am at indoor soccer? Are you serious? Do I look like Ronaldo to you? Because I can most certainly assure you that could not be further from the truth, okay? Take a look at my player build, right? And then look at his! Dude, I'm built like Night Witch! Yeah, that's exactly what I thought. Now, there were many more things about gym class that I thought, with back to school in full swing, why not make a video about it now? So, without further ado, let's just get right into it. The locker room. The school locker room is probably one of the most disgusting places on earth to ever be in. Somehow, in a room no bigger than a kitchen in a New York City apartment, everything under the sun happens. Anything from sacred bro chat where you sneak off in the middle of dodgeball and talk about some of the most touching topics to a full-out UFC-style brawl. Like, I bet if I were to film it and make a pay-per-view, I would be a millionaire within 10 minutes. Every time you would walk into the locker room at school, it was almost unpredictable what was going to happen that day. But one thing that was never unpredictable was the smell. The smell of the school locker room is probably one of the most atrocious, revolting no scrunching sense to exist imagine the smell of 20 12 sweaty people in a locker room with a lingering scent of chlorine and urine and that is honestly the best way i can even attempt to describe what it smells like it's actually abysmal i don't think words can justify the scent of the locker room bro no amount of Airwick or Glade air fresheners could even put a dent in the aroma that is the school locker room. In fact, I'm surprised the paint didn't start peeling off of the walls. You know, I'm surprised the cinder blocks didn't just start crumbling and turning into sand. Because if I close my eyes and think about the smell... <sighs> It takes me back to a time that I don't even want to think about. Now, I made a video a while ago about why school bathrooms are horrible, which is pretty similar to the locker rooms. So if you want to hear more in depth about this, you can go watch that. I'm going to leave the link below. Now, moving on to a bit of a happier note, gym class definitely did have some of its positives. For example, those rainbow colored scooters. Honestly, I don't even really know what they were even used for in the first place. Like, I don't think we ever once used them for their actual, you know, intended use. One thing that I remember doing though, is always sneaking into the back storage room of the gym and taking the scooters and attempting to use them as skateboards. But it obviously was nowhere near the same as a skateboard. Like, just because it has wheels does not mean it is a skateboard. I mean, take a look at the difference in shape. One is a board with edges on the end, and it is also a straight long board. While the other one is just a square piece of plastic with rotating wheels. Like, bro, what was I thinking? But again, Kids just want to have fun and do their own thing. Another great part about gym class was when we would have something that's called a free day. Now, a free day was pretty much where you can do pretty much whatever you want. As long as you're not sitting on your ass and watching TikTok or doom scrolling through Twitter. Oh, sorry. I mean, X. You know, as long as you weren't doing that the entire class, the teacher usually didn't really care. The teacher would usually highly encourage that you just walk around the gym with your friend, and that's exactly what I would do most of the time. Me and my boy would do laps around the gym and just talk about really whatever came up on our minds. Like, bro, I'm not really sure what was in the air, but those gym class conversations would always hit. Like, we'd be spewing so much philosophical information that people would think that we were Isaac Newton, bro, I swear. Now, you know what? I'm going to be the first one to say it. I didn't really dislike dodgeball. And that may be controversial to say because I know a lot of people highly dislike it. And I can't really say that I blame you because at the end of the day, you're getting things thrown at you. But come on, it wasn't as bad as the other alternatives that there were. It wasn't my favorite either. Like, would I much rather be sitting at home, rotting in my bedroom, watching YouTube and eating a pint of ice cream? Oh, most definitely. Who wouldn't? But would I choose dodgeball over sitting in history class and learning about some old fart politician from the 1800s? Oh, most definitely! I know, I know, dodgeball still isn't the most fun thing on earth, and it may not be your first option, but despite all the negatives, it did have a couple positives. For example, throwing things at people. Yeah, no, we're, we're not gonna say that. Dude, why not? It was just a joke. Yeah, no. 
We're, we're not saying that here. <sighs> okay, never mind. Another thing about gym class that I found wasn't too bad was that if you really think about it, it's kind of for your own good. Like, I don't want to sound like a Sigma male who thinks he's better than you just because he goes to the gym, you know, going like, I'm well, actually, I lift every single day and I'm so much better than you. Like, nah, bro. Oh, if only women knew how much core strength I had. Like, bro, shut up. I know that you definitely feel like an alpha right now, but nah, bro. You sound like an incel. You know, tip in your fedora. My lady, how do you do? Like, nah, bro. Anyways, I don't want to sound like Sigma Nathan over there, but being active really is good for your health both physically and mentally. I mean, school is trying to prevent you from being built like Snorlax. Like, they don't want you to cost eight elixir, bruh. One other thing about gym class that was so annoying was some of the people that were there, bro. Oof, they were absolute tryhards. You know, trying everything that they possibly could, not only to impress the girls, but for some reason to even impress the teacher. And you know exactly what I mean. During warm-up, when you were supposed to be doing nothing but a light jog or even a walk from one side of the gym to the other, this is the one dude who would be doing a full sprint as if he was being chased by his worst nightmare or something. Bro, give it a rest, you know? It could be a game as simple as duck duck goose and this kid is going to be trying his absolute hardest you know he's gonna be like duck 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 can you hurry up and choose already duck duck goose like bro holy this is a third grade gym class not the summer olympics chill out for one minute jeez and the funniest thing is that this kid would act like, you know, some Kobe or LeBron James during basketball in gym class. I don't know if it was to show off to the girls or something, but no one ever was looking at him like, wow, he is really, really good at this game. No, I can guarantee you that every single person that was looking at you was thinking, yo, why is he trying so hard? Like, dude, this is gym class, chill. Yo, what a voice crack, holy. Oh, also real quick, I'm really sorry if I sounded like my voice was messed up or if it sounded like my nose was plugged. Um, That's because my nose was plugged, Uh, yeah. <laughs> the last thing about gym class that I wanted to bring up was health class. Now, I'm not gonna go too, too in depth, but the worst part about this class was most definitely the ones where we had to do assignments. You know, I was the type of person that was sort of excited for gym class because, you know, you're not going to be sitting in a room listening about things that you don't care about. You know, you actually get it to be active in some sort. You get to blow off some steam, but no, you would always have those couple classes a year where you would do nothing but an assignment and write like your nutrition plan or things saying what you ate this week. Like, bro, I'm a 16 year old. What do you think I ate? You think I actually meal prepped with some chicken, rice and broccoli? No, that's obviously not what I'm gonna eat for dinner. The most nutritious thing I probably ate in high school was sun chips for dinner. But bro, these assignments really made no sense to me because they were trying to treat us as if we were fitness influencers. But I don't really see the point in that because again, I wasn't eating anything too nutritious in high school. I was just eating what was convenient and what would fill me up the quickest. And that just so happened to be a McDonald's Big Mac meal. School. It's awful, let's be honest. And when I say that, I don't think I'm making a big unheard of statement. Now, over this past year, I've made a lot of videos about school, whether it be types of kids in high school, types of teachers in high school, or even just the school bathroom. So I thought it would be fun if I decided to put every single video so far I'd made about school into one. You can even just have it on in the background. You know, while you do the dishes, while you fall asleep. You can even watch it while you take a sh if you really want. By the way, it's also uploaded on my Spotify, along with all of my other videos. Videos. I love you guys. Thank you so much for watching and for all of your support. Now, let's take a look into Gamer Subs. Guys, I am really excited to announce something, and that is that I am partnering up with Gamer Subs. This is a brand I have been a fan of since before I even started YouTube. Now, essentially, what it is, it's a cheaper and a healthier alternative to energy drinks or soda. Take a look at example number one. Compare the nutritional facts from this can of Red Bull to one serving of Gamer Subs. And yeah, I think it's safe to say that Red Bull loss. Example number two, it is so much cheaper than your regular energy drinks. To prove it, I even walked to the nearest store to look at the price for one of these drinks, and when I took it up to the cashier, 
$3.37. $3.37 for one serving versus 40 cents for one serving. It's a no-brainer, come on. Now, if you're not into caffeine, lucky for you, they also have a caffeine-free line. It's also worth mentioning that it's keto-friendly and diabetic-safe, and that's because it has zero sugar, zero carbs, and less than one calorie. Just make sure to use code TOKIMON at checkout for 10% off, and a big wet kiss to our friends over at Gamersups. With that being said, types of kids in high school. With hundreds of kids having to see each other every day, it's no doubt that you'll start to take notice to what type of people these kids are. With me recently just finishing my time in high school, I thought it'd be fun to make a video on this, so I'm just gonna jump directly into it. Alright, first on the list, we're gonna be talking about the band kid. These kids are usually always on iFunny or r slash dark humor on Reddit. Bro, these kids, every time they open their mouth, you just know it's going to be something meme related. And not even a good meme at that. Typically, the hallway right by the far back corner of the school, specifically by the janitor's closet, is where their breeding grounds are. I also noticed that they love to make fun of Fortnite. Bro, it does not matter in what context you're talking about it. The second you say Fortnite, it's almost like their trigger word. Yeah, dude, I, I logged onto my Xbox for the first time in a couple months the other day, and I actually decided to check out Fortnite. Haha, <laughs> cringe. What? Ring ding 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 ding. The F word equals cringe. Bro, what are you even talking about? Another thing I observed is that these kids love to T-pose. It's like their version of the bat signal, bro. Once you see one of them T-pose, you just know a whole crew of them are about to Naruto run up on you. Overall rating, 2 out of 10. The next kid we got is the Hype Beast. He's most of the times wearing either a tracksuit with some white Air Forces or some Jordan 4s with a V-Lone shirt and some jeans that look like they just got thrown into a wood chipper. All this guy will talk about is how much money he just dropped on shoes and designer clothes when like, no, you did not. Your parents almost most certainly got you those. This same kid is posting on his social media talking about how his SoundCloud music made all of this money and blah blah blah. So you're telling me that you got thousands of dollars from your music which has under 400 plays on Spotify? I don't know man, something's not adding up. Now you can usually catch this kid in the hallway in between class transitions. But before you even see him, you're gonna be able to hear him out loud rapping Youngboy or Drake. You can hear this dude from like a mile away. All of that aside, I never had a problem with this kid, but I knew other people who did. But for me, he was pretty chill. Overall rating, 4 out of 10. Next up on the list, we got Know-It-All Nelson. Bro, this kid will act like he is the smartest kid ever just because he watched a Neil deGrasse Tyson interview. This dude will always try and counteract and debate with whatever the teacher has to say. And almost all of the time, the things he say aren't even correct and make no sense. I had one of these kids in my math class and this dude was relentless. One time I remember, we were doing a trigonometry unit in math class, and as the teacher is in the middle of the sentence, this kid raises his hand and just starts talking about percentages in statistics. Bro, what does that have to do with anything that we are talking about right now? This dude seriously thinks he's the next Albert Einstein because he got 80% on a pop quiz. This kid you can typically find decked out with an anime t-shirt, cargo shorts, and worst of all, sandals with no socks. Bro, especially in school, what are you doing? Overall rating, 3 out of 10. Next on the list, we got the jock. I don't really have much to say about these guys. In Canada, there are more hockey kids than there are football kids. So I'm mostly speaking about hockey kids, and most of the time they're pretty nice, and they tend to leave you alone. But there's also the select few who think that they're better than everyone, and just treat everything and everyone around them like garbage. Bro, you can go ahead and call me sus all you want, ain't nothing gonna change the fact you stare below your homie's waist in the locker room. Bro, I remember when I was a freshman, some senior hockey kid came up to me and just started making fun of me for literally no reason. I had never even seen this kid in my life, he was just doing it for the sake of doing it. But worst of all, something that just pisses me off to the max is the way that they dress. They dress similarly to the hype beast just somehow a little worse with those stupid ripped jeans and that snapback hat literally just teetering on the top of their head. 
It doesn't necessarily just have to be a snapback. Sometimes it's like a Carhartt beanie. Why are you wearing a winter hat in the middle of June? Bro, how is it even staying up on top of your head without falling? But somehow, even worse than all of that is those stupid f***ing pit vipers. Those stupid looking glasses, man. You look like you're straight out of Robocop. Are you going skiing? Bro, you have the balls to wear those out in public, let alone school? Oh wait, I forgot these kids are immune to bullying. But apart from situations like that and bringing back the mullet, they haven't really given me a huge problem, and once you get to know them, they can be okay. 6 out of 10. Next up on the list, we got Spanky. Now listen, Spanky is a, is a specimen which I think we all had in our school. He's really, really weird, he's stinky, but most sus of all, he waxes gack in the bathroom. Now, the reason we call him Spanky is because we could always hear the spanking sound coming from the stall. Like, oh, hell no. When I go to the bathroom to take a piss, that's all I'm trying to do. I'm just trying to do my thing and get out ASAP. Because for those of you who don't know, the boys' high school washroom is where some of the most wild shit goes down. Now, this one time I was walking to the cafeteria because I wanted to get a snack, you know? And I see three different variants of Spankies hunched up in the hallway. And as I pass them... I look, and within their tiny little spanky cult meeting, one of them was holding a dead mouse. I wish I was joking, but I am not. If there's one thing I want to say to any spanky out there, I just want to let you know that there is a time and a place for your funny business, and high school is not one of them. It's usually pretty easy to spot a spanky because they're usually wearing sweatpants and a raggedy old zip-up hoodie, but don't worry, your scent receptors will smell him before you can even see him. Absolute bottom of the list, 0 out of 10. Alright, last on the list, we have the smart kids. Listen, man, I never, and I mean never, had any beef or ill will towards these kids. In fact, I don't really think anyone ever did. If you were one of the people who decided to go up to them and just start shitting on them for no reason, I hate you and I would put you at the same tier as Spanky down there. Hello? They were always super kind, they were always willing to help you out with your assignments, and even on a good occasion, give you answers. One thing I noticed is that if the teacher forgot to assign homework, this breed of smart kid isn't the type to raise their hand and say, Um, teacher, there's actually homework. Nah, bro, they hate it just as much as you do. The only difference between me and them is that they would actually do it. Like, these guys are most certainly gonna be successful instead of working at an insurance firm for the rest of their lives. These guys usually kept to themselves, though, and I think that was actually for their own good. All in all, I think that the smart kids were the best in high school. Good personality, most helpful, and surprisingly pretty funny. Zero complaints, a 10 out of 10. Anyways, that's going to be the end of this video. If you guys want to see a part 2 or want to see a new video topic, feel free to let me know down in the comments below. School rules. School is something that we all have to do, whether we like it or not. You have to sit under the fluorescent lighting for eight hours a day, listening to the teacher talk about something that you don't care about. And on top of that, you have to follow some of the worst rules ever to be formulated. Like seriously, bro, some of these don't even make any sense. So I thought it would be fun to talk about some of the worst school rules. The first one being needing oh to God. ask to use the bathroom. Oh, now this, in my opinion, shouldn't even be a rule. I think it's kind of ridiculous that we need to ask to perform a basic human function like i'm going to be honest if i'm asking you to use the bathroom after lunch i'm not really asking i'm warning you that i'm going to use the bathroom after lunch and if you want to be the one op that says no you can't go to the bathroom well then okay I guess you're just gonna have to clean it up yourself. Which, trust me, bro, after what I ate at the cafeteria for lunch, you do not want to be doing. The second it comes in contact with your skin, it'll probably start corroding, melting away as if you stepped foot into the upside down, or even Chernobyl. The most annoying thing, though, was when I would ask a teacher, hey, can I go to the bathroom? And the teacher would say, I don't know, can you? Like, what, is this a trick question? Yes, I could. I could right now on the floor. The only problem is, I feel like I would get charged for something like that. Especially at 18 years old. The most dehumanizing thing is having to ask to use the bathroom as a legal adult. 
Like, bro, I'm not a kid anymore. Why do I still have to ask to actually use the bathroom? Not even just use the bathroom. You have to ask to actually leave the classroom, period. Like, even to go to the water fountain. Like, jeez. <laughs> it really doesn't make any sense. I don't know if they think it'll break our focus going to the bathroom or drinking water. Well, actually, you should have brought a water bottle. Bro, shut the fuck. If anything, our focus is already broken because we're too focused on trying not to, you know, open up the floodgates while you're talking about history. This rule was so stupid. I hated it. Another rule is no sleeping in class. Like, bro, don't act surprised that students are falling asleep in class when we have to wake up at like seven in the morning for five days a week following the same routine over and over and over again. Yeah, no kids are gonna get tired. I really don't understand why school had to start so early early though and if you would come to school and bow your head down on your desk you know the teacher would just straight up call you out on it like why i'm just trying to rest up a little bit considering i was up all night contemplating on my existence and stressing out about this very class like bro you can't catch a break <laughs> especially when you're in high school though or like the 12th grade like oh i am so sorry that i was up having a social life instead of studying about my country's history sometimes i was staying up late at night and i would look at the time and it was like 4 a.m and i thought uh there's no point of sleeping anymore because i have to be up in like two hours anyways okay maybe that part's a lie and i just ended up skipping my first class or i would just come extremely late like i'm talking last 10 minutes of class but you know what being late is another rule that's stupid obviously for me i was a little excessive but sometimes i would get in trouble when i would come like one or two minutes late a lot of the time it wasn't even my fault because you know what it happens. I'm obviously not every single class going to be up front and center. Sometimes we'd have teachers where if you came like one minute late, they would already mark you as absent. So then you had to go to the office and say, hey, I wasn't absent today, by the way. But there were also the teachers that would mark you absent if you were late but wouldn't tell you. So then when I got home, my parents would be like scolding me for skipping classes. When I really didn't skip, I just didn't know I was marked as absent. I mentioned earlier that sometimes it wasn't my fault. And that is true because this one time a fight broke out in the hallway and I couldn't get past. So then when I finally got past, guess who was marked as late again? Oh, spoiler alert though, it was me. Hey, sometimes things happen that just aren't in our control, you know? And you know, you gotta give us some slack. Another horrible rule was no eating in class. Just like going to the bathroom, this shouldn't even be a rule because it's a basic human function. I do understand if the teacher's in the middle of talking and you're just scarfing food in your mouth like so the principal founding fathers of America are George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, John... Are you done, Mr. Toke? God, we haven't eaten today. Mr. Toke, you may be excused to go to the principal's office. Or if you're bringing an entire delicacy to school, you know, some cheese, bread, wine, and grapes. Yeah, obviously the teacher isn't going to be the happiest. But if it's just like a little small snack, like a granola bar, and the teacher lectures you, like, bro, really? You're going to lecture me for eating this? This, a granola bar which can be opened and eaten within 35 seconds. I just don't understand why the teachers get so pressed about it. Because fun fact, according to Google.com, studies have found that eating breakfast may improve short-term memory and attention, and students who eat breakfast tend to perform better than those who don't. So see? Haha! -ha! Science says I can eat in class, but the teachers still say I can't. Bro, those are the all. Uh... There were some teachers, though, who honestly just didn't care. Like, as long as, again, you're not having an entire meal and you're just eating a couple things in class yeah no problem they were super chill about it they didn't really care same with going to the bathroom sometimes they were just straight up like bro it's senior year and you have three weeks left of school i could care less those were the chill teachers the next rule is going to be no phones now i have no idea why but this one is just so stupid when i say no phones i really mean no phones some classes the teacher would come around with this cursed basket where you would have to put your phone in it and at the end of class they would give it back to you or you had to ask if you could get it back and sometimes they would just straight up say no and give it to the office like bro you are not my parents you're a teacher sometimes the teacher would just walk up 
to you and take your phone, even if you were just checking the time. We had this one kid in school, we're gonna call him Tyson, where if he saw you on your phone, he would actually raise his hand and be like, well, he is on his cellular device during class time. Like, bro, is that any of your business? I was just trying to see if it's gonna rain when I'm walking home. Next up, we got the dress code. No hats and no hoods is probably one of the dumbest things I've ever heard of. I've heard that it's because of security reasons, which is just completely stupid. Because if I'm the only one in the school who wears a red New York Yankees hat every single day, I'm pretty sure I'm going to be the only one who would be a suspect in any suspicious activity. Now, I'm a dude complaining about the dress code, but that is nothing compared to the girl's dress code. Like, I feel like we need to take a moment of silence for how strict it is. Like, no straps smaller than, what is it, like, three fingers? Nah, bro. I'm still forever thankful that I wasn't in a school that required uniforms, though, because can you imagine how boring that would be? I feel like the way I dress is almost like a way of expressing myself. But if you're in, like, a preppy uniform private school, that really isn't an option for them. Because they are wearing the same suit and tie or sweater vest and dress shirt. Oh, I'm forever thankful I didn't have to wear a sweater vest. I found out that some private schools actually require you to have a certain haircut. Like, bro, imagine having a guideline for your haircut. They essentially want you to look like you're in the military. It is ridiculous, seriously. Types of kids in high school. The sequel. High school is a part of life that I think everyone should experience. Not only is it necessary for your personal development, but I also think it plays a fundamental role in establishing the kinds of people you enjoy hanging around with. With that being said, there are definitely certain types of people that you tended to gravitate away from. So with how well the last video did, you guys left countless comments saying that I left a bunch of people out, so I thought a part two would only be fair. So I'm just gonna be going straight into it. <laughs> For my last semester of high school, I took theater not because I wanted to, but because I needed the credit in order to graduate. And let me tell you, some of these guys indeed are some peculiar beings. They can never seem to grasp the fact that you have different tastes than them, especially when it comes to not liking musicals. But hey, I'll hail Hamilton, am I right? Some of them also take it way too seriously, as if they think their everyday life is a play. Bro, you can't even have a normal conversation with them without them acting super dramatic or bursting out into a song. Yo, do you think you could pass me my backpack real quick? I am now going to make a harrowing journey to retrieve your satchel, good sir. Uh, okay, cool, thanks, man. It seems that I just cannot find it. Never mind, I'll just go grab it myself. So it was simply not meant to be, I suppose. I'm going to walk away now. Most of them are pretty chill to hang out with, and I still keep in touch with a couple of them to this day. I will give credit where credit is due, though. They have a great sense of style. It's hard to even pinpoint what they specifically wear because it's usually something different every day. But what I can say is Doc Martens and Converse are usually their go-to shoes. That being said, there's also the other selection of theater kids who will still wear sandals with no socks, a My Hero Academia shirt, and old sweatpants with holes in them. Great sense of style, mostly. And despite the occasional annoying ones, they're pretty good people. Overall rating, 8 out of 10. <laughs> yeah! This is definitely someone I think almost everyone has seen, whether you're just starting off high school or you've already finished it. You know exactly who I'm talking about. Most of the time they have blonde hair, they're wearing white air forces with either skinny jeans or black lululemon tights with some sort of white cropped shirt. And don't forget the Starbucks water cup. On the popularity scale, these girls are usually at the top of the food chain, along with the jocks. And you know, they wouldn't be so bad if they weren't some of the rudest people to ever walk the face of the earth. And that's because their popularity status does nothing but fuel their ego. If you're friends with these girls and you think, She wouldn't talk bad about me, would she? Oh yes, she would. It doesn't matter who you are or how long you've known each other, they will always find something about you to nitpick, and that is going to become a gossiping topic. But that being said, you shouldn't let that bother you because they're also the same people that are going to peak when they're 17 and not be able to let go of their high school days, even when they're married with three kids. And I am beautiful, no matter what they say. Overall rating, 2 out of 10. Ooh, yeah. These guys are some of the calmest and most laid-back people ever. They never tend to have any problems with people in school because although their physical form may be in school, their spiritual form is in a whole other dimension. 
These dudes always show up to class like 15 minutes late with their eyes already half closed and just plop down in any available seat and tune out. I know this for a fact because I've done it before. You already know that spare was their favorite part of day because the second that bell rings, they're running straight to the cafeteria and blowing like a good $26 on some curly fries and chocolate milk. These guys are also so generous. Like sometimes I'd see these kids in the backfield, they'd be passing around a Benjamin. And you could just be some random dude walking by and they'd offer you a hit. When it comes to fashion, they tend to keep it really simple with usually a hoodie, vans, a beanie, and just any regular old pants. These kids were chill as hell. I'm still friends with a good amount of them. Overall rating, 11 out of 10. Yeah. Alright, next up we got the MPC, bro. This kid really just tends to keep to himself and isn't a part of any big social groups. He's not outcasted, he's not bullied, he's just there doing his own thing. This isn't necessarily a bad thing, he always just seems to be in the back of the class. Sometimes I would pass a dude in the hallway and try and talk to him. Let me tell you, if there are robots living among us in society, it's definitely these guys. Hey, how's it going, man? Alright, alright. Hey, do you know what our next test is? Good talk. Good talk. Much like the stoner kids, no one really had a problem with these guys either. Mostly because there wasn't anything that you could not like. He's just following his programming. This dude never really interacted with anything other than his own coding. So, I don't really even think I can give him a rating. So, uh... This is his rating. <laughs> yeah! No one knows how or why, but this dude seems to have Riz straight from the Dragon Scroll. He usually wears just a simple pair of jeans, a t-shirt with sneakers, and this dude will manage to pull no matter what. Hey babe, I was wondering. I'm free tonight at 8.30 if you want. When you go to ask this dude what his secret is, he usually just responds with some cheesy ass line like, What can I say? The ladies just dig me. And I hope you never go to a club with this dude, because he will be sworn by an unfathomable amount of women. I don't have a problem with this dude, he's pretty chill, but the mystique that goes around his technique is indeed puzzling. Overall rating 7 out of 10. So this kid is essentially the other variant of the smart kid. This is the type of kid to constantly be agreeing with everything that the teacher has to say, thinking that they're better than everyone, and worst of all, reminding the teacher that we have homework. And that is why A squared plus C squared equals B squared. Well, have a good day, everyone. Um, uh, pardon me, teacher. I'll have you know that I've been calculating every day for the past three and a half months that at approximately 3.27 p.m. you assign homework. Bro, Yo, there's Tyson. no way this shot really, up. Bro, really, really, right here, really? No, this dude literally has no redeeming qualities. Negative one out of ten. <laughs> bro, this dude will give gym class his all no matter what. It doesn't matter what we're doing in gym class. Dodgeball? Cover your face. Basketball? Oh, he's gonna try and dunk on you. Soccer? He's gonna be dribbling around like it's the FIFA World Cup. This guy will manage to suck out every ounce of fun that is gym class. If it's a substitute teacher and you're just chilling with your friends on the bleachers, this dude will tell on you for not being physical enough. Like, bro, come on, mind your own business. You know exactly who I'm talking about. You know, the kid who thinks his entire life is being broadcasted on SportsCenter. He's constantly running down the halls and all you can hear is his shoes squeaking. He's jumping up and trying to hit the ceiling. Yeah, dude, this guy just sucks. He's a dick. Overall rating, 1 out of 10. Alright, that's pretty much gonna be the end of this video. School bathrooms. As to nobody's surprise, the school bathrooms are where the majority of nefarious incidents occur. In my time in high school, I did my best to actually avoid using the school bathrooms because of the activities that would happen. Whether it be more kids getting busted for vaping, people wetting toilet paper and throwing it at the walls, to even a whole function, the school bathroom is one of the most unpredictable places you may ever visit in your life. I consider the school bathrooms to be just as bad as a New York City subway, because every time you go 
go, you know you're going to witness something, you just don't know what. So with four years of experience under my belt, let me recall some of the horrors you can expect to see in the school bathroom. Starting off with kids vaping. Alright, this is probably the most common occurrence you'll see in the school bathroom. Kids usually go in here to vape and chill out for upwards to like 45 minutes. I'm being serious, I've seen kids who literally skip entire classes to come in the stall to start puffing their almighty vice and play Clash of Clans. If you're one of the poor souls who like to take a dump in private and you're in the middle of a session and you hear these guys walking in, just know they're not gonna leave anytime soon. One rule that I always found stupid in school though is that if you were in the bathroom while there were other people vaping and they get caught, you are in just as much trouble as they are. I noticed that the only thing you can actually do to repel these kids away was jingling your keys before you entered because they always thought it was either a teacher or worse, the principal. The next thing you shouldn't be surprised to see is a couple weirdos in the bathroom. Now I know a couple people have already mentioned this, but I just had to also. Bro, the people who still pull their pants all the way down to their ankles are crazy. Now listen. If you're under the age of 8, I guess I'll give it a pass, but I think we all know that one kid who after elementary school just never changed the way that he would use the urinal with his Tonka truck hanging out. And like I just said, if you're young, you get a pass, but nah, these are teenagers we're talking about. When I was in the 11th grade, I saw a senior doing this, and that's when I realized, Ayo, this is getting out of hand. Like, bro, you are a full-grown adult and you are still pulling your pants all the way down to go pee? You better change that habit because I can almost guarantee that it isn't going to play out well in public. Like, think about it. You're in a Walmart and you... Okay, that's something you can expect in a Walmart. You're in a Red Lobster and you go to the bathroom and you see some full-grown dude peeing with his pants all the way down to his ankles. I'm pretty sure you'd feel violated in some form. Now, now, now. If you felt violated after seeing something like that, imagine how you'd feel if you hear someone straight up whacking their gack in the stall right next to you. I'm just trying to go in there and take a pee and I immediately am met with the sound of clapping and grunting. Bro, come on. I understand eventually you get to a certain level of down badness, but once you start even considering doing that in school, hey, bro, you gotta go. Another common occurrence you can see are some menaces. They are simply there to trash the place and give you a bad time. Like if you're just chilling in the bathroom, you know, taking a dump, these kids will laugh at you and on their way out, turn off the lights. There is no peace when you're in their presence. The way they usually leave their mark is by taking a handful of toilet paper, running it underwater, and then whipping it as hard as they can against the wall. They always tend to leave the bathroom a disaster, like one time I saw a log sitting in the urinal. Sometimes if you're lucky you can even witness a fight occur, and sure, although sometimes it can be a friendly brawl like just friends fighting, most times it's kids having actual beef and beating down on each other, all the while you're just trying to go pee or something, but by far the funniest thing I think I've ever witnessed was a poem that one kid left in the stall, and it went as follows, here I lay in smelly vapor someone took all the toilet paper late for class but still i linger look out ass here comes my fingers i can just sense this guy's struggles but by far the worst thing about school bathrooms is when people are taking pictures in them like if i'm casually taking a shit at school and i see a couple pairs of air forces walking in I just know I'm about to see some pictures on Instagram in about a couple hours. And the worst part about it is that they take forever. And half the time all the pictures look the same. Long story short, don't take pictures in the bathroom. You don't look cool, you look stupid. When you can't make it into the hood, make it to the school bathroom. In conclusion, do expect to see some of these things in the school bathrooms. Please comment your guys' experiences down below. This is something I actually really am curious to see. Thank you guys so much for watching. I love you all. Types of kids in high school, part three. High school is something that almost every kid has to go through eventually in their life. Sitting under the fluorescent lights, listening to the teacher blab about something that you don't care about, all the while witnessing some of the most peculiar individuals to walk the face of the earth. High school is the home to many different types of people, most of which I've already covered in these two videos, but I still have more kids I want to talk about, so let's just cut to the chase and start the video off with... 
goth kid. All right, bro. Now, this is someone that I just know you've seen no matter what. The goth kid is possibly the most ominous person in your school a lot of the time no one even knows where they are until they suddenly teleport into the back of your class without anyone noticing this kid is kind of like the npc but with dark mode turned on now these kids tend to listen all to the same type of music you know radiohead lincoln park my chemical romance things like that and their music taste is one of the things that they will spam on their instagram story as well as their music taste they would be posting random quotes from like Marilyn Manson with the claim that it's deep and only certain people will understand it. But then you see the quote and it's something like, When the sun goes down, it is nighttime. Ozzy Osbourne on a four day bender. Something else that they love to do is not participate in literally anything in class. Like if there's a group project and you're paired with this kid, just be prepared for you to be doing the entire project yourself. But then once report cards get around and they see that they're either failing or that they got a barely passing grade, all you're going to be hearing for the next three weeks is how it isn't fair. Bro, you know what would solve the problem? Actually showing up to class. Like, trust me, I was no straight A student in high school and my teachers even told me, you don't even have to be paying attention. 50% of your grade is just showing up. Now you may be scratching your head thinking, well, how do I find them? Uh, you, you know what, who am I kidding? No one is going to ever be asking that because they are so incredibly easy to spot. You see, there are two variants of the goth kid. The first one is just keeping it subtle and simple. And then you have the people who look like Jack Skellington if he's in the middle of an overdose. Like, God, I did not know that Sephora sold Sharpie. Yeah, get your big eyelashes and fly away with them to make room for our next kid. I believe I can fly. Four out of ten. The Country Kid. When they pull up to school, it is in one of two things. An old 2003 pickup truck or a station wagon from the 70s. Now, I'm not one to judge what you drive because, dude, I don't even drive myself. But, bro, if your Ford F-150 is taking up two parking spaces, you gotta just pull some Arthur Morgan and ride your horse to school and honestly that wouldn't even be the weirdest thing that he's done because i mean bro he already dresses the part a horse would just be the final thing he needs to complete his character dlc another thing that the country kid likes to do is trash on living the city <laughs> Like, the way that this kid describes living in the country is like he was raised by wolves. How hard he works, and every day how we wouldn't even last 10 minutes living out in his world. But have you ever actually driven past this dude's house? Because once you do, you'll find out that living in his world is actually living in a $2.5 million house. The only difference is, instead of a gated community, he just lives in East Bumble. 3 out of 10. Now, this next entity is someone who I can almost guarantee sends a little shiver down your spine. A minor tickle in your sack, if you will. The sheer mention of this person will cause you to have a flashback to your high school days. Brace yourselves. The blue hair girl. No, 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 my child. There's no need to be scared. The blue hair girl can't hurt you anymore. Is what I would say if they weren't everywhere, including outside of school. The blue hair girl is truly an anomaly to me. It doesn't matter what you say or how you say it, she will manage to find some way to get offended over it and try to correct you politically about it. Bro, like I could be trying to go take a piss and this girl would get offended and turn it into something that it's not. Anyways, bro, uh, I'm gonna go drain the lizard real quick. Just give me a hot minute. Um, what was that? Uh, I'm- I'm going to the bathroom. The bathroom? Then why mention a lizard? Bro, it's- it's a metaphor for my- Yo, wh why do you even care? This is none of your business. So you're racist. Like mentioned previously, somehow anything you or anyone else says, she will manage to turn it into a political debate. The worst part is that there are kids like this in almost every one of your classes. But if you want to avoid them, just- just don't join drama class. Drama class is like the breeding ground for these kids. The most annoying part, in my opinion, isn't the fact that they think... I'm not even gonna go further on this. There's a lot more I want to say, but I don't want it to take up the whole video, so uh, we're just gonna skip to the ranking. Negative 10 out of 10. I hate these kids.
Next one we got is the Sigma male. Now, the Sigma male thinks that just because they eat cashews and go to the gym maybe twice a week that they are so much better than you. They get their thrills by making fun of people on the internet and in real life. Now, on the internet, these kids are some of the boldest people ever. They will straight up talk about how everyone is below them and sometimes even spread their misogynistic views. But when it comes to real life, they won't ever say something like that. They think that deep down in their mind that they are Patrick Bateman. They are the true alpha males in today's society. Uh, until they found out that American Psycho is not only satire, but Christian Bale himself said all these kids need to grow up. I can just imagine these kids' worlds came crashing down after hearing something as devastating as that. 3 out of 10. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, and the last kid on our list is going to be someone that I think we all have experience with, and that's going to be the TikTok kids. So, there are two variations, boys and the girls. Let's start off with the girls. These are usually the people doing dances in the middle of the hallway, just blatantly getting in people's ways. Like, bro, there is a whole stampede of people coming down the hallway, and we have to go around you because you're too busy doing the renegade? Bro, are you serious? But then you also have the guys who will be just harassing random students doing these stupid TikTok interviews. Do you want this $3? Or double it and give it to the next? Oh, dude, I mean, I'm pretty hungry. I'll take the $3. Double it and give it to the next? Perfect. That's, uh, that's Thank not what you I for said. playing. All of these kids are overall a nuisance. I'm just gonna give these kids a 4 out of 10. In conclusion, what have we all together come to learn? Uh. Nothing. Apparently nothing. If you guys enjoyed this video, you can leave a like. And if you like seeing content like this, I try and post once a week. So feel free to subscribe too. I also want to say thank you guys so much for 40,000 subscribers and for the support on the past few videos. Hitting 10,000 views on nearly every video consistently is just something I never thought I'd actually ever do. So thank you guys so much. Thank you. I love you all. Back to school. That's right. Everybody's least favorite time of the year. Going back to school. Bro, I swear school feels like it just let out five days ago and we already have to go back. Like literally nobody ever wants to go back and that's honestly for good reason. You went from sleeping in till 10.30 in the morning and waking up to birds singing outside of your window to being woken up by this at 6.30 in the morning. <laughs> Now, with all that being said, I thought I'd give you guys some tips that I wish I knew when going back to school. The first tip being show up with some drip. Now, when I say pull up in drip, I'm not talking about pulling up in all designer. You know, if you pull up in a Louis V belt and like a Montclair jacket, you're gonna look like a cornball. But at the same time, don't pull up in one of these shirts. Like if you pull up to school in a shirt that says, I paused my game to be here, bro, you're pretty much just asking for a swirly at that point. Nah, bro, like... Well, actually, I'll have you know I passed my harrowing journey on Genshin Impact to pull up to this educational establishment. Like, nah, bro. Definitely don't do that. What you do want to pull up to in your first day is something pretty neutral. Choose out a nice pair of pants that you like, pair it with a nice shirt or sweatshirt, a nice pair of sneakers too, and then you're all set. But I'm telling you, bro, just wear anything other than what I did. On my first day of oh senior God, year, bro. I pulled up in a Sailor yeah. Moon shirt and what SpongeBob fan. Bro, I could have pulled up in an eat, game, sleep, repeat shirt and it still would have been drippier than what I wore. Once again though, make sure you don't wear anything too flashy though. Especially if you go to a public school because bro, some people are menaces. They will without hesitation steal your shoes. Like if your shoes randomly disappear, keep an eye out on Facebook Marketplace. Because I can almost guarantee that within 48 hours, you'll see them Johns up for sale. The next tip I got is going to be pack your own lunch. I don't really think I need to do much explaining on why you should do this because I really do think these pictures explain for themselves. Ooh, yeah.
I'm almost willing to bet that all the ingredients they use aren't even FDA approved. Because a lot of the time, it was just completely inedible. Like, have you seen what some of the chicken sandwiches or pizza looked like? Awful. Like cardboard. The plastic food that I used to have when I was a little kid in my kitchen looked a lot better than this. It looked more appetizing, that's for sure. And I bet it was actually safer to consume the plastic than it actually is to eat this. Like, bro, they are just straight up feeding you Chernobyl toxic waste. Like, the milk you get served is almost 100% a month past its expiry date. Like, you think you're getting a chocolate milk with your meal, but the second you open up that carton, you then realize that it's a chocolate cheese instead. And the smell that would come off of it. Ugh. The thing of nightmares, I'm telling you. School lunches always smelt like ammonia for some reason. Now trust me, for your own well-being, please pack your own lunch. Something just as simple as a piece of fruit, you know, a juice box, and like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. You could probably go digging in the garbage and whatever you find is much better and safer than whatever they're serving in the cafeteria. Better yet, just bring like five bucks to school. We had a Safeway grocery store and a corner store right by my school, so a lot of kids would just go there for lunch. But what I would do is I would actually walk home. Because at home, number one, you're home, and number two, there's actual food. And on top of all that, it's free as well. Next up is going to be don't don't be a teacher's pet. I am begging you, never pull up to school and be that one dude that's always like, Well, excuse me, teacher. I cannot help but notice that we have homework. Like, I swear, those dudes were the biggest ops. So please, whatever you do, don't be that kid because nobody wants to be friends with that kid. And there are many reasons for that. The main one being, you're reminding the teacher to give us something that nobody even wants to do. Like, bro, come on, really? Like, we all get that you want a little bit of praise from the teacher. Oh my god. Thank you for reminding me. But what cost is it? Because sure, you can be all buddy-buddy with the teacher, but at the end of the day, is it really worth it? Because hey, fun fact, you're only with that teacher for around one or two years. You're stuck with everyone around you throughout all of school. Would you rather please every teacher and have everyone around hate you? Or maybe make some friends throughout school, huh? I don't know, man. I, I don't know. I can't stress enough how important it is for you guys to not be a teacher's pet. It's just not worth it, trust me. The next tip I'm going to be saying is don't fall to peer pressure. This is really something important, and I want you guys all to know it. Guys, I want you to know it's okay to say no to something that you reasonably don't want to do. Like, you shouldn't have to explain to your friends why you don't want to be ruining your lungs before you're even 18 years old. It's a lot easier said than done. And trust me, I know that because the amount of times I fell to peer pressure... <laughs> Bro, it's so embarrassing. And I always wanted to say no, but I never did. And I honestly kind of regret that. You gotta stand your ground. If you really don't want to do something, you don't have to do it. And let me tell you, if any of your friends are saying, oh, do it, do it, do it. Even though you've said no about four or five times, they're not very good friends, man. And I hate for me, a YouTuber, to be the one to have to tell you that. Bro, the amount of people I know who are now completely a because they got peer pressured once when they were in high school. It's ridiculous. It's really not worth it. Again, take it from someone who has fallen to peer pressure so many times he can't even count on his fingers. Next up, we got school supplies. Do not forget your school supplies at home because this is something I did so many times. Like, it's almost embarrassing the amount of times I would go to my first day of school all ready to start up a new year. And then I realized I left all my things at home. So I started off my back to school year very very strong by getting a call home from my teacher because I left all my school supplies at home. Like, me and my family did all this shopping at our nearest Walmart. You know, we weren't picking up Crayola. We were picking up that crazy art pencil crayon pack. I'd be picking out all the different color binders I'd be getting. You know, my most dapper Lightning McQueen backpack with a matching lunchbox. Like, bro, it is without even question that I, of course, pulled up to school in my most dapper of school supplies. I was locked and loaded ready for every pop quiz coming my way until I wasn't because once again, I left it all at home. The next tip we got is going to be stay organized. Now, trust me, you're probably thinking, well, this is pointless, but man, it is not, I promise you. 
being organized and having somewhat of a schedule and routine to your day is so important because it's honestly something I wish that I followed when I was going back to school. I was so messy and so all over the place that I wasn't even able to tell what I was doing half of the time. Like I was for real so disorganized, I had all my subjects just placed in one folder. I didn't even use my binder honestly, I would just throw all my papers and notes in my bag, only for them to be gone within the next three days. Like I know at the time it's really hard to actually get up and organize your subjects and your notes and and everything like that but really it, it's so worth it it really is something that I wish I did this is gonna sound so goofy but in my eyes it's almost like a long time investment if you just take out maybe an hour or two to completely organize your things it'll be so much easier for you to deal with later down the line because bro I was always showing up to school never being able to find my notes or what we did the day prior because again I would just shove it straight in my backpack and a lot of the times I would get home and honestly, I would just throw it in the garbage. So yeah, obviously I wasn't able to find it. But yeah, bro, honestly, you just need to stay organized and keep your things in check. Now, with all that being said, this is going to sound so corny. And I know it is. But trust me, just be yourself. Don't pretend that you're somebody you're not. Because at the end of the day, people can always usually see through a fake personality. And they can usually tell if you're two-faced or if that's not really who you are. You really do just need to, you know... Be your all natural self. And don't let anybody tell you that you shouldn't. Because all throughout your life, there are going to be people who don't like the way you do things, the way you look, you know, things like that. And at the end of the day, man, who cares what they think? They can't stop whatever you're doing. Just mind your own business and be your own person. High school. It's something that a lot of people have experience with. Whether you're in it right now or whether you're out of it. Many people's high school experiences are different. But the one thing that every student has in common is the teachers they interact with. Now, considering how well the last two high school videos did, I thought I'd mix it up a little. And this time, instead of talking about kids, I'd talk about teachers. So, without further ado, I'm just going to jump straight into it. Alright, bro, the first teacher we're going to be talking about is the strict teacher. Now, this guy is running his classroom like it's a boot camp. For example, one thing. He's very strict on the no phones in class rule. When, let's be real, did anyone ever follow that rule? The second I would start to get bored, you already know I would be checking in to see if my town hall had finished building. The second he would see you on your phone though, he would walk up to your desk and just stand there with his hand out, not saying anything. Yo bro, peep my town hall, I finished building, look at this. Yo! <clears throat> oh, oh. You may retrieve this from my desk at the end of the period. But if you think this guy is strict with phones, wait till you see this guy with a hoodie or a hat on. You know some teachers were cool about it, but not him. Like his marriage is in jeopardy and on the brink of divorce. But instead of worrying about that, he's worrying about you wearing a hat. Now I searched up why students can't wear hats in school and the search results said it was for safety reasons. Bro, if I'm hiding anything malicious under my hat, I think it would be pretty obvious to see what it is. Bro, what is under your hat? Oh, nothing. Why, what's up? D does it look like something's under my hat? There's a nuke under your hat is what it looks like. Oh, huh. Must be a bad hair day. Nah, because this guy had no chill when it was coming to hats or hoods. When I used to go to a French immersion high school, this teacher would completely ignore your existence unless you spoke to him in French. This one time my mom came to pick me up early because we were moving houses and I went to go tell my teacher and this man just ignored me. And it's not like he couldn't even speak English. He was perfectly fluent. Hey, I, I gotta go. I'm helping my mom move. I'm, I'm gonna leave now. Sounds good. En français. <laughs> Teachers like this suck. Two out of ten. Now the next teacher we got is the fine teacher. Now this teacher had every guy and their father simping. Like, god damn, madame bodacious, chill. Some of these dudes in class would always try and riz her up. The thing about this teacher is that she can have the most obedient class ever because these guys think that if they do everything she wants and are all of a sudden straight A plus students, they'll have a chance with her. Like, nah, little bro, you don't. If she would ever ask someone to do a favor for her, like bring something to the office, every guy in the class is gonna start arguing on who does it for her. But on some odd occasions, the teacher who everyone finds attractive is just rude. And there are two reasons for this. 
A, because she's just not a great person, or B, because she's tired of all the 16-year-olds finding her private Instagram and trying to hit her up. I don't know if she thinks being a little ruder will make them back off when, no, instead of that, she just turned them into a bunch of submissive betas. It was kind of embarrassing for these guys, bro. It was sad. Don't get mad at me for this. 7 out of 10. Alright, the next teacher we got is the weirdo. Bro, this teacher. There is so much to unpack. This shit is like an iceberg video. There are layers to this. For starters, he's weirdly personal. This guy will open up about his private life and make jokes about it. Not even good jokes at that. So that is how you find the square root of a problem. <laughs> sure wish my wife knew how to do that. I thought you guys were going to therapy. Yeah. Well. Yeah. He also just acts mad sus towards some of the girls in class, saying they look beautiful. Like, bro, you're in your 50s and they are 18. Calm down a little bit. We had this one teacher in high school who was weird as hell, bro. So when the lockdown first happened and school went online, it was obviously very new. Our teachers had to send links to articles that we had to read for assignments and such. And bro, this one weirdo teacher sent a link and we expected it just to be another article. What was opened up is beyond what any student could have seen coming. This man accidentally sent a link to an a website. It was so surreal. The teacher also just seemed to say some of the most out-of-pocket stuff imaginable. Like in high school, my music teacher would consistently make jokes about a certain figure who was rejected from art school. Same with make jokes you hear in an Xbox party. He once made a joke like that in front of our school counselor and she was dumbfounded. Another thing is his lunches would be some of the most outlandish stuff ever. Like this dude would be coming to school with like a tuna peanut butter sandwich. This teacher is weird as hell, bro. 3 out of 10. The next teacher we got on the list is one that we don't praise enough. The chill teacher. Bro, this guy is just so laid back. He wants to get out of that class as much as you do. Completely opposite from the strict teacher. This guy doesn't care about what you do. I used to wear earbuds in this guy's class all the time, and again, he didn't care. Hell, I even used to watch Breaking Bad while his lessons were going on. And I think he knew about it. When it was group discussions and you got to get into groups with your friends and discuss the topic of the class, ain't nobody doing that. You just know everyone is getting together and talking about whatever they want. And once again, I think he knew. But sometimes this teacher would be giving a lesson on something he was genuinely passionate about. And honestly, you can tell. Ice. I love this teacher because if I can Ice. tell that it's something he enjoys talking about, he radiates more energy, which then makes it more engaging. This guy was chill as hell, and yeah. Dude, comfortable 10 out of 10. Alright, alright, alright. Now I know some of you may be thinking, hey, they're not teachers. Well, you know what? These guys don't get enough credit. The janitors and the lunch ladies are some of the best people you will meet in a school, at least at my school. They were always up for conversation and you don't even need a filter half of the time. Lunch ladies are some of the most down to earth people in school. I would always talk to her when I would get my daily mug root beer and yeah, she was just overall a really good person. Sometimes she'd even spot you a free thing of fries or something. But janitors bro, man, some of the stuff they have seen. Like in elementary school, when someone gets unfathomably sick and they start projectile vomiting all over the ground, who's the one who has to clean it up? Not you. Not the teacher. The janitor. If you're in the bathroom and someone decides to take a sh** on the floor, who has to deal with it? The janitor. They deal with so much and they don't get enough credit Lunch ladies and janitors, fucking a thousand out of ten. That's about it for today's video. Thank you guys so much on the support for all of my recent videos. It's crazy, and to think we're already over a quarter of the way to a hundred thousand is unbelievable. Thank you guys so, so much. I love you all.